An Islamic terrorist mowed down numerous victims in a car before stabbing a police officer and trying to attack the Parliament in London. And how did the left respond? By expressing their concerns, not for the victims, but for how it might make Muslims look bad. In moments, Donald Trump will begin exploiting the attack in London today. Do not allow this to be an indictment on Islam or Muslims. Far-right figures like Tommy Robinson are vile opportunists, using victims of today's attack to spread their anti-Muslim message. That's right, some members of the media were more upset that Tommy Robinson had showed up to the scene of the attack than the attack itself. But at least London Mayor Sadiq Khan was quick to respond. Oh no, that's right, it took him more than five hours to appear on camera. Trump's ignorant view of Islam could make both our countries less safe. It risks alienating mainstream Muslims. London has proved him wrong. Yeah, that tweet hasn't aged well, has it? But at least none of them were stupid enough to blame Donald Trump, right? Trump probably has a hand in this. Yeah, okay, but it's important to remember that hashtag not all Muslims are terrorists and that Muslims don't support this. Here's a screenshot from France 24 Arabic's live video feed. Note the smiley faces and the thumbs up. They're saying, quote, God curse the infidels, and quote, that's how the lone wolves of Allah operate. Here's a screenshot from Al Jazeera Live. I'm watching Al Jazeera Live, you wouldn't believe the number of likes, well done, and Allah Akbar. Here's a moderate Muslim perspective. I'm seeing rumblings that what's going on in London is an attack from radical Islam. If so, there was likely good reason for it. But Hashtag not all Muslims, right? These cowardly bastards can maim, murder, and terrorize all they like, but they'll never win. If by winning, you mean changing society, then they are winning, with the full complicity of the left. Canada is currently debating a motion that will effectively criminalize Islamophobia. In other words, criticism of Islam just three years after their own parliament was also attacked by an Islamic terrorist. They are winning, and our governments are helping this ideology to spread. They're welcoming it in. We're erecting glass walls around the frigging Eiffel Tower. Sweden just allowed 150 ISIS terrorists back into their country. Oh, but don't worry, because they set up a phone hotline for people to report them. And then closed it down, because it might be racist. Now we have the Islamist Erdogan threatening to send Muslim migrants with the vow that Europeans won't be able to walk safely on the streets. France just polled young Muslims and found that a third of them, a third, expressed sympathy for terrorism. Here are a few questions that spring to mind. Why are Brits being arrested for tweets while Islamists are free to walk around Parliament draped in the ISIS flag? Why do we have a mayor who calls moderate Muslims Uncle Toms? A mayor who says terrorist attacks are part and parcel of living in a major city. And I'm sick to the back teeth of saying it. But I'll say it again. Pray for hashtags won't prevent this. Turning off the lights at the Eiffel Tower won't prevent this. Putting a filter on your Facebook profile pic won't prevent this. Sticking your head in the sand and pointing the finger at right-wingers will not prevent this. And whether this terrorist turns out to be homegrown or a migrant or whatever, the belief system is the same. Acknowledging that Islam is not a religion of peace and is in serious need of imminent reform will prevent this. So don't intimidate and attack the Muslim reformists who are trying to make that happen. Not rolling out a red carpet into our country to be exploited by terrorists as they've done over and over again will prevent this. How many more mangled bodies on our streets will it take before that happens? Click the link below to subscribe to the channel. And for more breaking news, go to Infowars.com. The Making of the President 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated a Revolution. This is the untold story of how Trump defied all the odds to win the presidency. From former Trump confidant Roger Stone, the inside scoop of how Trump rocked the establishment. Get your signed copy of The Making of the President right now at Infowarsstore.com.